Hey, everybody clap your hands. Give God some praise tonight. Come on, come on, come on. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord. We're glad to be in the presence of God tonight. Thank God for all that he is and what he's doing tonight. We thank God for his grace, his mercy. Thank him for allowing us to be here. Thank him for allowing uh, you to tune in. For all of you that are tuned in, we want to thank God for you. We want to thank God for you being with us. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing. Amen. If you're excited to be in the house of the Lord, can you praise God? Let them know that we are praising God for being in the house of the Lord. We truly thank God for his grace and his mercy all that God is doing. So what we're going to do, amen, we're going to challenge everyone that's listening under the sound of my voice. If you would share it with as many people you can, if you would share it with as many people you can, we would highly appreciate it. Thank you for, amen, tuning in. Thank you for sharing it. And we're believing God tonight for his grace. We're believing God as we're sharing. Amen. We're going to begin to pray. I have some teaching to do tonight, so we're believing tonight that God would do what he said he is going to do. So as we are, as you're sharing the word of the Lord, amen, we're believing that someone's life will be empowered, someone's life will be impacted, amen, by his word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for keeping us, guiding us, protecting us, leading us, shielding us, holding us, helping us, guiding us, protecting us living in us God we thank you for all that you are to us Lord as we prepare for Bible study tonight as your word come forth let it be like a hammer that break rock Lord we ask even the more as your word come forth let those that hear your word receive your word and let it be conducive oh God let it be permeated in their heart in Jesus name we pray whether they watch now or later we'll forever give you glory and praise amen amen somebody clap your hands all over the house all on live come on clap your hands put the chicken down for a minute and clap your hands come on amen we truly thank God for all of you that are here I am grateful. Thank you, New Direction, for showing up tonight in the midst of construction. <laughs> Thank God for you. Amen. As they say, uh, pardon our mess. We're in the midst of progress. So, amen. Thank you all for being attentive to, to Bible study and being into Bible study and uh, in, in the midst of what we have going and the things we have going. We thank God for our first lady, Lady C. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. She's still, amen, uh, my love. So, amen. This, officially, this is the month I met her in. Amen. Back in 1999, I met her in January. So, we, we're going to celebrate all this month, amen, our meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we met, glory to God. Now, it ain't our wedding anniversary, but it's our meetup anniversary. Come on. Hallelujah. But we thank God for the mothers. Thank God for all of you. Let's go into somebody shout his word time. Oh, uh, y'all didn't say it like y'all ready for the word. Come on. Shout his word time. Amen. Thank you. Look at the brothers are in the house. Amen. It's word time. It's time for the word of God. We are believing God for his word. We are believing God for what he's going to say. Amen. Uh, grab your Bibles in 1 Chronicles. We want to go to 1 Chronicles, the fourth chapter. If you would be so honored to stand for the reading of the word. 1 Chronicles, the fourth chapter. Very familiar passage of scripture. There are 31,102 verses in the Bible, but this young man took two of them and made it uh, transparent, made changed the trajectory of his life. Amen. Uh, in the book of 1 Chronicles 4 and 9, can we shout, it's word time again? Come on. Amen. It's word time. Time for the word of the Lord. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Here it is. Verse 10 says, amen. And, Jab and called his name Jabez, saying, I bear him with we saw, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, how? Indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God 
granted him that which he requested. Let me read it again. And Jabez called, come on, give me verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Do y'all know him? Saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Let there be no question about your blessing. And enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and thou that thou mayest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Now, I, I, I believe Jabez prayed this in verse 10 based on what happened in verse 9. Because the Bible said Jabez's mother bare him and she called his name Jabez because she bare him with sorrow. She put something on Jabez based on her experience. I want to talk tonight, amen, I want to use for a topic tonight, <laughs> overcome the curse. Overcome the curse. Come on, somebody say it with me. Overcome the curse. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the king. That's what we want to talk about tonight. Overcome the curse. Our title tonight is Overcome the, the Curse, as well as we're still dealing with faith and favor. We're dealing with the faith and favor and the things of that nature. But we want to talk about overcoming the curse because we see something transpire in this text that is very significant that is very powerful, that is very encouraging to let us know that everything that happens in our lives, amen, we can reverse it. Come on, everything that bad happened to us, we have the power to reverse it. According to Proverbs 18 and 21, life and death, death and life is in the power of the tongue. In other words, whatever you can speak, amen, it can come to pass. If you speak it, you shall be able to receive it. Somebody said, if I speak it, I shall receive it. Tonight, we're talking about overcoming, amen, the curse. Somebody said, overcome the curse. The curse, amen, the thing that has troubled you, that thing that has kept you from believing, the thing that has been troubling you throughout your life, that thing that has been troubling you throughout, amen, the history of your life. We are going to overcome the curse. Tonight. We're going to overcome. Those of you viewing us online, we're going to overcome the curse. Tonight, we decreeing that God is going to cause us to overcome the curse. Amen. What does it mean to overcome? It means to get over, to have conquered, to, amen, to have victory. Over what? The curse. What is a curse? Something that is cursed, something that is evil or misfortune that comes as if in response to imprecation or retribution. Intolerance is the greatest curse of every land, my God. A cause of great harm or misfortune. A cause of great harm or misfortune. This is a curse. Not only is that, Missionary Wood, a curse is torment. A level of torment. Now, here it is. We got to overcome the curse. We got to overcome what curse? The curse that may have been put on you. The curse that may have been placed on your life. The curse that may have experienced, you may have experienced in life. Over, somebody shouted with me, overcome the curse. In other words, that thing that has been tormenting you. That thing that has been hunting you from generations and generations, that thing that's been hunting you down, and I'm going to have three, four categories tonight that we're going to talk about. Amen. The Bible said in Jabez was more honorable. I laugh at this story. I la often laugh at this situation. Because if you read Jabez, you read the story in 1 Chronicles 4, it, it began to talk, it was talking about Misa beget this person, this person beget this or that beget, and all of a sudden, it skipped to this story out of nowhere. So when people wonder where you come from, you say, out of nowhere. <laughs> I came out of nowhere. My story came out of nowhere, but guess what? I'm going somewhere. 
So Jabez's story comes out of nowhere. Here it is. And Jabez was more honorable than his brother. It doesn't even tell us about his brothers. It doesn't even give us his brother's name. But he was more honorable than his brother. In other words, this story began to, re to uh, reveal to us that there was something going on in the family. There was a family thing going on that God said he was more honorable than his, uh, than his brother. And his mother called him Jabez. Now, the Bible didn't say his mother honored him. His mother really cursed him. Uh-oh, I'm about to help somebody right here. His, the Bible said he was more honorable by who? God. He was more honorable by God. There's a word, Greek word called karito, called divine favor, divine honor, which is favor. Amen. Favor is the root word, but carito is, amen, divine honor. That's what carito means, favor, amen, divine honor. Divine honor, the honor that comes from where? I'm um, God. I love what Psalm 75 and 6 says. God, the promotion comes not from the east, west, nor the south. God is judge that takes down one and put up another. And when God puts you up, <laughs> nobody can cut you down. Hallelujah. We got some men around here. They cutting trees and things of that nature. There's no chainsaw that can cut you down when God push you up. But the seed that God has planted. So we want to talk about the curse. We want to talk about, amen, overcoming the curse. The first curse we want to deal with is the spiritual curse. This woman went through something physically that had an impact on her spiritually. That she named her child her experience. <laughs> Let me hear if y'all say that again. She named her child her experience. She didn't name him uh, Sunshine. She didn't name him Daylight. She named him Jabez because of what she experienced. Now, there is something going on in this story that is not revealed unto us. We don't know why she was sorrow. We don't know, uh, Minister Betty, why she was sorrowful because the Bible says she named him because she bare him with something. We don't know if daddy stepped out on her. We don't know if she was having some, hey amen, the, the doctor didn't give her epidural. <laughs> We don't know what was happening. All we know that she was having a moment. Y'all sister know about that ever do it. Y'all be wanting that. See, we don't know what happened, but all we know what happened, she bare him with, she don't know her BFF walked out on her. She bare him with sorrow. She, we don't know if she didn't like his baby, the baby daddy. She didn't like his father or whatever. Whatever it was, she was naming him based on her experience. How many of you have experienced something in the physical and it had an effect on you in the spirit? It had a spiritual effect on you. And even though it happened to you in the natural, it caused you to do some things different in the spirit. You don't trust like you... Uh-oh. You don't trust so easily like you used to. Before the coronavirus, you didn't hug like you used to. I know y'all didn't got to the point y'all don't hug folk no more. No more. <laughs> but before that, it was to the point where you, it, it seemed like things were happening and, uh, and it affected you spiritually. Some of us have been marked because of something grandmama went through. And we've been marked because we've been hurt spiritually. Watch this. We were hurt by somebody else that was hurt. Jabez's name is Jabez based on somebody else hurt. Here, uncle touched you because uncle touched you because he was hurt. Uh-oh. Come on, y'all. Let's, 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 let's come over this curse tonight. It was something physical that happened that, oh, in some cases, auntie and cousin touched you. That should have, mama did some things that caused you to be spiritually wounded. I'm going to help you all tonight. We're going to get through this thing tonight. That caused you to be spiritually wounded. Watch what, but his mother was dealing with something that caused her sorrow and she named her son out of her experience. 
She was going through some things, so he called her something that was out based on her his experience. Watch this. But you don't have to be somebody else's experience. <laughs> Woo, God am I. I say you don't have to be someone else's experience. You don't have to live someone else's experience. Come on, watch what uh, Colossians 3 and 15 tells us. Watch what the word of the Lord tells us in Colossians 3 and 15. Why? Because you represent something different. And let the peace of God, what? Rule in your heart to the which also you are what? In what? In one body. And be ye thankful. No, he was all right. Cam, that's how you're supposed to show him. Cam said, I'm going to praise God, Bishop. I know where you're going. He began, he said, how many of you thank God for peace? I'm going to say it again. How many of you thank God for a level of peace? When God gives you peace, there's nothing can overcome the peace, the level of peace in your home, the level of peace. You know, I know um, my wife coming home, or me coming home, because she already be at home. But anyway, either way, it happened. I'm, I know that it does her great to be able to be in the house with a husband that she see every day and have peace. Come on, I, if, if we didn't belong with each other, the, the coronavirus exposed a lot of relationships. You said, but I sure be glad when you go to work. No, they say, I'm going to work at home. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they ain't got no, you, you, some of y'all almost want to build another room on your house. But watch this, if we weren't meant to be together, by now we would have known. I say, well, you know, it was, it was good ride. <laughs> but let the peace of God, no matter what you happen in your life, there's a spiritual curse, a curse that you've been dealing with from your childhood or from your experience that caused you to be spiritually wounded. Let me work with this. Let me work with this, Skeet. You, you, don't, you don't have the confidence like you used to have. You really don't have the peace like you used to have. But tonight, we want to break that curse. We want to break that curse. What? Now, let me deal with this because I'm a leader. I'm, I'm a leader, and I got to deal with this. Some of you have experienced church hurt, and you won't walk into a church anymore. Some people have experienced church hurt, and you won't walk into a church anymore. But tonight, Every spiritual warfare that you went over and went through, I decree that you will be able to overcome that spiritual hurt and you will walk right back in the house of God. It wasn't God that did it to you. It was man that may have been spiritually wounded themselves. So tonight, I break the curse of spiritual warfare on your life. You're wounded by something that somebody else did. That's something somebody else brought to you. Something somebody else, amen, something happened to you due to somebody else's experience. But the curse has to be broken. Bring me back out. Bring me out. Holly, the curse has to be broken. Somebody said the curse has to be broken. The curse has to be broken. It is broken on your life. Somebody ought to shout right there. The curse is broken. You have to break the curse. Every curse that has been on your life, every curse that tried to take over your life, you have to break it. You have to believe that God is breaking it. So the spiritual curse, cur and let the peace of God be ruling your heart to the which you are called, and be ye thankful. Now watch what uh, Philippians 4 and 8 says. Come on. It says, after you went through all this stuff, watch what Philippians 4 and 8 says. Finally, brethren and sisters, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, come on, whatsoever things are of a good report. I know what they're telling you, but there is another report. If there be any 
any virtue, if there be any praise, if there be any power that you can speak, if there be any praise, think on these things. <laughs> so everybody that experienced church hurt, think on the thing, not the church. Think on the things that God brought you out of. And, and let me, for, for uh, disclaimer, you know, I as a pastor may have hurt somebody. Okay? I may have hurt somebody. I would tell anybody, if you go to a church and the leader don't say nothing that hurts your feelings, you might be at the wrong church. Huh? I may have said something to somebody, they got offended by it, and they just, just stormed out. But isn't it amazing how you can, and I'm not saying this about everybody, but isn't it amazing that <laughs> you storm out of the church so easy, but you're still dating Pookie? You're still dating a system that hurt you over and over and over. All I told you to do is drop the zero and get a hero. <laughs> and you got mad at me. Come on. All I told you is you need to, you need to, you know, be faithful to God. More than you're faithful to your job. And you got offended like I told you to quit your job. No, keep working. Man don't work, he doesn't eat. So we have to break the spiritual curse. Come on, y'all said spiritual curse. Y'all writing this down? The spiritual curse. The, the spiritual curse. All right, here it is. Uh, I, I need to give you another verse. Isaiah 63, 61 and 3. Watch this. Watch with the word of the Lord. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the all of joy for mourning. She's somewhere, Jabez's mother didn't see this verse or experience in the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the trees of righteousness. I told you about that tree. The planting of the Lord that he might be what? Glorified. That God would get glory out of your story. I was hurt, but I'm not dirt. I won't let my hurt put me in the dirt. Oh, I feel a word right there. Don't, don't let them bury you. <laughs> I said, don't let them bury you. Come on. I heard that somewhere. So, that, so the first curse we wanted to deal with is the spiritual curse. Somebody said spiritual curse. This first curse we want to deal with is the spirit. Something she experienced in the physical had an effect on her spiritually. She didn't think the way she's supposed to think. <laughs> Come on. Most parents, when y'all get, ladies, when y'all get ready to have a baby, now, now they got all kinds of things, revealing parties. <laughs> Daddy sitting there, he want a boy. Lady want a, a girl, you got pink or blue. and all, You got all these things. You're buying, you, y'all have this list now, you send to Amazon. You got all these things that you do now, expecting the child. And here is Jabez's mother not experiencing none of that activity because she had an experience. The Bible doesn't tell us where her experience was, but she's so sorrowful, she named something new from her old experience. What do you do when God is trying to give you something new, but you're still holding on to an old experience? You're holding on to an old experience, and that's why I tell y'all, some of you are married to, to, to Henry, but you're fighting Jimmy. Some of you married to Sue, but you're fighting Bessie. Because <laughs> you've been spiritually wounded. There's a spiritual hurt. And some of them, some of them, some of them don't have to be from another relationship. It can be from what mama did or daddy did. Or the, and that's why I wanted to treat my kids better than my parents. My mom treated me well. Amen. My father was there. And I'm not going to go into detail. But my father was there. And I, and I said, I want to treat my sons like I wanted my father to treat me. Okay? To the point where Jay, and I, I made this commitment 
I made this commitment. Well, maybe this is going to go into the next one. Maybe I need to say that. To, but I made this commitment. I wanted to be a father uh, to my son. You know, me and, you know, I hang with Jay. Me and Jay do things. We do father things and uh, uh, father and son. And I, want, I need it to happen more. So that he would not have a spiritual curse that said, well, my dad didn't never do nothing with me. We'd be at the uh, Monster Cham and all that. You know, he got on me because I ain't take him to the basketball game, whatever. <laughs> I'm grown. <laughs> so there's a spiritual curse from a physical experience. We have physical spiritual curse. The next curse I want to deal with this is generational curse. Notice she named Jabez. So somebody would have to ask, because back in the days when you were named, most of the thing it would name for your name really meant some. See, y'all don't look up y'all name no more. Y'all just name folk. The Chinese, do you know how the Chinese name their kids? They throw a, 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 a fork or, or utensil, something on the wall and whatever sound it makes, that's what they make. Seriously, that's where it generated from. Yeah. Yeah, that's how they made the ping pong. He ping pong. <laughs> Anybody Chinese who was watching me, forgive me. I just did. That's how they named their kids back in the day. Now, they don't do it now, I, but it generated. See, y'all learned something at Bible study. But that your name had a meaning. Y'all come on back. The name had a meaning. So if someone named you something, what did your name? Don't be naming your child Chucky. It has a meaning behind it, okay? And so there's a generational curse even pertaining to Jabez's name. His mom was cursed with her hurt. So she named Jabez based on her hurt. So what Jabez has to do, he's another generation that has to carry the name of something that happened from his mother. How many of you... How many of you say, God, whatever you do, don't let me be my mama. Don't let me be my parents. Come on, y'all. Don't let me be what somebody else in my life was. Don't let me be that. Let me be something that will break the generational curse. Jabez, amen, name was a curse that he would have to carry, by oh my God, for the rest of his life, but don't carry the curse. Mom used to say, do so, so. Why? Because I told you so. And that was good. We understood. But nowadays, parents, don't be trying to raise your children like mama raised you. Because I told you so. Now, there's a level of step. Now, there come a time, you say, hey, take the trash out. Why? Because you... It's trash night. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I just felt something there. So, I mean, where, where was I? Generation curse. Don't carry the curse. The generation of curse was, will, will, will pass down to your generation, to the next generation, and the generation out. Why? Because something happened in the former generation. So, this is what I did, Brother Terrell. I said, what should I do? God said, look up the word generate. As I abstract from Wester, Wester said, generate means to cause something, especially an emotional or situation to arise or come about. That you are fussing and sound just like your mama. You are mad and sounding just like your daddy. Somebody told me, you're going to be just like your dad. I don't want to treat my wife like my father treated my mom. Jay should not treat his wife just like I treat his mom. He should treat her even better. Come on. Pretty, no, I ain't going to talk about that. Jay should treat his wife because Jay going to get married. Glory to God. Jay should treat his wife better than I treat my wife. Why? Because I'm being the example to Jay on how to open the door after 22 years. How to still love on her 
after 22 years. Still, amen, do certain things after 22 years. Because there should not be a generation of curse where he think his mama is okay. Uh-oh. Y'all got quiet on me. Hidden mama is not okay. He never heard me tell his mom. My daughter never heard me tell her mom, shut up. Never heard that. Now, there's some house rules. They would tell you, I'm the nice one. I'm the one get beat up. But none of y'all going to believe that. Y'all going to ask that question, what you do, bishop? What you do? But anyway, we're going to move on. Generate, generation, come from generate, to cause something, especially an emotion. I can feel y'all rising up now. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all already in gear. What you do? Generate, to cause something, especially an emotional or situation to arise or come about. Out of nowhere. But it was based on what you experienced. Generation of curse. Somebody said generation of curse. Watch what Joel 1 and 3 says. Watch what Joel 1 and 3. He said, uh, God realized that there was a curse on the children. And this is what he said. He said, tell your children of it. And let, uh, it should be Joel uh, 3 and 1, 3 and 4. Jeremiah chapter 1 and 3 and 4. And let your children tell their children and let their children tell another what? Another generation. It said, let your children tell a bit and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. What? Verse 4 would normally say, I don't know if I gave it to our team, but that which the, can the palmer worm has left, the locust has eaten. And that which the locust has left has the canker worm eaten. And that which the Canker worm has left, has the caterpillar eaten. Woo! Let me read that again. That which the palmer worm has left, the locust has eaten. And that which the locust has left, has the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm has left, has the caterpillar eaten. It's eating up generations of generations. But I want to decree tonight, the buffet is over. I decree that the buffet, I got to preach that one day. The buffet is, oh, somebody ought to shout it. The buffet is over. I'm tired of the devil eating up every generation of my life. Overcoming the gen overcoming the curse. So he said, tell your children of this. Everything that was eating. Your mama had high blood pressure. Your mama, mama had high blood pressure. Your mama, mama, mama had blood. Oh, the book stop here. It is over. I'm just because my, my family was crazy. I'm not gonna be crazy. I got favor. On my life. Somebody decree that tonight. I have favor over my life. Overcome the curse. Well, it just runs in my family. No, it's about to run out of my family. It's about, I refuse. So Jabez's mom was saying, okay, Jabez, you got to carry your, you got to carry your, you, Jabez, you got to carry this name. So Jabez's son might have been Jabez Jr. Jabez the second. So there's another level of sorrow going through the family of Jabez. But we're here to break the generation of curse. Why? Because we're going to be, go beyond what Jabez, Jabez's mom said, Jabez, I was sorry. I'm sorry, but I got to name you this. I'm sorry, but I'm going to name you sorry. So you can go through life sorry. So every time you call Jabez's name, you were speaking into his life. Jabez, Sarah. In other words, Sarah, come here. Jabez, come here. Sarah, come here. Then, but the curse, tonight we break the curse. Come on, somebody say it with me. Tonight we break the curse. No more generational curse over my life. It has to stop right now. 
If you believe that, praise God right there. If you believe it. Why is the generation of curse broken? Because Ephesians 3, and I know y'all said, Bishop, we hear you quote this a lot. And yeah, Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that work in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. World without end, amen. What are you saying? Take your children with you when you go to the car dealership. Take them. When we went to sign papers on the property, we took Jay, the, 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 the guy that was selling the property, brought his sons. And I said, this is how this thing worked. They brought their sons to sell their son. We own something. So I, I took my kids. Take your kids to the car lot. Show them they don't have to drive a Pinto all their life. You got to, every time you ready to start your car, you got to let the hood up and put the barricade on. Come on. You deserve to drive something better than that. Oh, man, I'm, I'm going to help somebody. Take your children in the other neighborhood. Show them a nice house. Let them know this is not where you should be living the rest of your life. We're going to break the generational curse. Well, y'all belong over there. Who said we belong over here? It's, it's breaking the generational curse because we got to realize that we're not a mistake. Somebody say it with me. I'm not a mistake. My parents may have made a mistake. My, they may have, some things may have happened in my life, but I'm not a mistake. I am a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. Somebody shout, I am a masterpiece. Therefore, I have to overcome the curse. Y'all got to say it with me. Therefore, I have to overcome the curse. <laughs> I, hope you might, I might not hit yours yet but I'm coming he says watch this he said but ye are here it is First, uh, First Peter watch what he said he said but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood Woo! And this word right here just jumps out of me we're breaking the curse because we are a chosen what so therefore, I'm breaking the generation of current because I am a chosen generation. I'm an elected generation. I am a prosperous generation. I am the consecrated generation. My God. I'm not the misfit generation. I'm the, my God, I'm the generation going to make it happen. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people, we strange, we're odd, we're different. That ye shall show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. What is the darkness, Sister Red? The darkness is the curse. God pulled us out of the curse. Thank you. God pulled us out of the curse. Generation occurred. Mama crazy, I'm crazy, uncle crazy, auntie crazy. Now y'all having a crazy family reunion. Everybody, you, uh, well, we already know Uncle Bob gonna come, he gonna be drunk. We already know sister, she gonna try to do the next slide and y'all turn it off, she gonna tear up the PA system. Isn't it amazing? Watch this, when you got saved, y'all realize in certain families, at the family reunion, y'all ain't got to act like this. Y'all ain't got to tell it. I know what happens, so y'all ain't got to act deep with me. You know that y'all sit in groups. <laughs> Let me say that again. At the family reunion, you know that y'all sit in groups. Y got the smoking group. You got the non 
tolerance group. You got the fighting group. Oh, y'all got the gossiping group. Oh, that group. Girl, look at him. You know that ain't her baby. You know that ain't her baby daddy. They got all the groups. It got to, it's a generation of curse. Things are happening. Things are going on. Things are happening in the family. Things are, but tonight, we're going to break the generation of curse. Somebody said, we're going to break the generation of curse. We're going to break the generation of curse. Why? Because we are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. Everybody, we, all of us ain't going to go to jail. So your whole family in, in, in peeing. Yeah, we run this part. <laughs> this the Calvin part. No, not the Calvin. This the, this the Cujo part. Whatever his last name. No, you don't want to. Somebody said break the generational curse. My God, I got to deal with this. Generational, everything is happening. Generational dream. You, uh, you got cussed out, now you're cussing your children out. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm going to show you a generational experience that none of y'all really, well, yet maybe some of y'all that have been on the new direction for a while, y'all know now. Why do you cut the edge off the ham before you put it in the pot? Why? Why did y'all do that? <laughs> Not you. You've been here long enough. <laughs> Why you do it? Because so, mama did it. Why mama do it? Because grandmama did it. Why grandmama do it? Because granny did it. And y'all know why? Because the pot wasn't big enough. <laughs> the pot wasn't big enough, so they cut the air. Y'all was like, ooh, it, it gives more seasoning. It wouldn't be no more seasoning <laughs> if you let the edge on. They cut it off because they didn't have big pots then. Now y'all got all kinds of pot. What's the name? Uh, what's the lady? Ray. Rachel Ray. Pioneer. Y'all got pots down. You put, you put a human in. They cut. Y'all come on. They cut the air in off the ham because the pot wasn't big enough. And so when y'all, yeah, Thanksgiving, y'all just, and you cutting off the big, good, the best part. <laughs> Why are you cutting that off? It gives more season. You didn't know that's if the reason they did it is because their pots weren't big enough. Somebody said, just like that. Generation of curse. I just looked at a movie, I looked at an episode of something yesterday. Two neighbors fighting each other. And so I'm just sitting here. This one neighbor, y'all can look it up if you want to. This one neighbor then, then took his truck and he's tearing down his neighbor's shed because his shed is two feet on his property. Y'all know how far two feet is? That's about from here to that podium. If that, brother, he, well, he's somewhere around. But about here. Yo, shit. He took his whole truck and tore down the whole, no, you know he didn't tear down the whole shed. He tore down the two feet part <laughs> of the shed because it was on his property. So the research came, why did he tear the man's shed? Because his granddaddy didn't like his granddaddy. <laughs> <laughs> and you come to find out why you don't like granddad? Because your granddad threw a Coca-Cola can over there and didn't come and pick it up. That's how it happened. We don't like the Thomases. Why? I don't know. We just don't like them. We don't fool with them. That's a generational curse. You don't know the Thomases might have your blessing. They may have what you need. Come on, somebody. And it really will mess you up because now your son is dating one of the Thomases. Oh, I'm going to shout right there. Uh-huh. Now your children have got entwined. <laughs> what are you going to do when he bring back it home? 
What are you going to do when she breathed uh, Pookie? Leroy, Leroy, Leroy. Pookie said, you stop picking on me, Bishop. What are you going to do when Leroy comes? You've been teaching racism? But now Leroy has your daughter. Because he want to break generational curse. Love don't have no color. Let me say it again. Love do not have a color. Love do not have a cover, a color. It covers, but it doesn't have a color. So yeah, we don't, we don't date them type of people. Who, what people? Jesus, God made them. So you telling me God made a mistake? Generation of curse. But we're breaking that tonight. We're breaking that tonight. I don't want people to, I don't want people to look at, you know, uh, it's happening. I don't care what y'all, but nobody say. It's happening in this generation. They don't care. They don't care. They, why your mama and your dad, why your mama and my daddy don't like each other? I don't know, but we like each other. And they will sneak off because of your, because of the generational foolishness. They will sneak off and go have some kids. Oh, y'all ain't helping me. Now y'all looking funny at the family reunion. That gossip crew, that gossip crew. <laughs> you, know, you know that baby went by. <laughs> I'm, what I'm seeing is generation of curse has to be broken. And the last place it needs to be is in the church. You know what I'm saying? It's in the church. It don't need to be in the church. So I invite all type of t couples. If y'all, listen, if you're listening to me, if you Mexican, you belong to this church. Come on. If you African, you belong. If you, if you Hispanic, you belong to this church because I need you to talk Hispanic for me. Whatever your race is, you belong to the house of God. Let's get over this generation of curse. What, what, what color are they? Tell, it don't matter. Okay, this is what y'all serving that white Jesus. Who? Who wonder? Who, who concerned about the color? I'm not. Y'all can be concerned. Y'all sit there and argue all about that. But I'm going to say, just as long as I got Jesus. Okay, so this is what I tell them. This is because y'all want me, y'all want to do all this, this thing. This is what I tell them. I say, if you're drowning on a dark road, you're in a dark place and you're drowning, and somebody said, hey, I'm here to save you while you're drowning, are you going to stop and say, before you save me, what color are you? What color? Before you throw me that rope, what color are you? No. Y'all going to say, say, do it. Come on. Save me. So while, we're, while more people are fighting generationally about colors, I'm sitting over here praising God because I say, it don't matter to me. If he were purple, I'm still going to serve him. If he was gray, I'm still going to serve him. I'm not, if, 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 if he's white, I'm going to serve him. If he's black, I'm going to serve him because he's God Almighty. I'm going to serve him. Zoom me, bring me out. I'm going to serve the Lord. Somebody says, serve God. Come on, somebody says, serve him. Don't serve the color, serve the Christ. Don't serve the color. Serve what he has done for you. Serve what he has been for you. Serve God with all ways. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I don't care what color he is. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm going to praise him. Somebody shall praise him. We're going to break the curse. Somebody say break the curse. Oh, God Almighty. So it doesn't matter 
what color. It don't matter what they did. If sometime we got to show the generation that came before us how to do it. Y'all don't get a loan. Y'all don't do it. Y'all, y'all sitting here paying on a loan that you should have paid off three years ago. And y'all done got a 15-year loan. Oh, that's going to that's gonna deal. I, I'm going a little too fast. All right, I got two more. I got two more. Let me do this. Jabez says, there's another, cu- uh, there's another curse I got I to gotta break. There's a curse called, and I kind of tapped on it, cultural curse. Cultural curse. I, I was, I was kind of in that zone anyway, cultural curse. Why? Because some people feel they're not qualified because they're not the right color. I wanted to be the example to break all the rules. You ought to be the example to break all the rules of whatever color, whatever race you are. You're going to break the cultural rule. Because watch this. The Bible said, and Jabez prayed to the God of Israel. He prayed to the God. So that lets me know he was serving. They may have been serving another God for him to call on the God of Israel. Israel. Watch what Exodus uh, 9 and 1 says. Watch what the word of the God said in Exodus 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, go into Pharaoh and tell him, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, children of Israel, Hebrew, Yahweh. Y'all know the Bible was written in Hebrew first. Okay, that's that's direct word, biblical universes. Let my people go that they may serve. Let who go? Let who go? Let my people go that they may what? For if you refuse to let them go and withhold them, God said, I'm going to get you. He said, I'm going to take you out. He said, he said, let my people go. So we are all God's people. But Jabez said, hold up. Mama, maybe you've been serving the wrong God. I'm going to call on the God of Israel. I'm going to call on Yahweh. <laughs> I'm going to call on, call on omniscient God. I'm going to call on the omnipotent God. I'm going to call on the omnipresent God. Come on, somebody. I'm going to call on the God of Israel. The God that heals, the God that delivers, the God that sets free, the God that manifests, the God that turns around, the God that picks up, the God that turn your life. Oh my God, the God of Israel. They said to the children of Israel, they said, oh, we're going to fight their God. Their God is the God of the hills. Let's fight them in the valley. Because their God is not a God of the valley. And God shows them, I'm going to whoop you in the valley and in the hills. You ought to tell the devil, don't mess with me. I'm, I'm bad on the hill and I'm bad in my valley. Come on, somebody. I'm bad in my good time. I'm bad in my bad time. I'm bad because my God is bad. Because I'm breaking this curse. Somebody said, break the curse. Come on, somebody, look at somebody and say, break the curse. You got to overcome the curse. The last one I got to deal with, because I know y'all, because Jabez said, I'm going to call on the God of Israel. And watch this. This is the first thing he said. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Indeed. Indeed. The thing that I always wrestled with was with Jacob is why did Jacob fight with the angel or with God, the supernatural? so hard because Jacob was missing the blessing. He had houses, he had cattle, he had cattle, he had children, he had wives, he had all these things, but he didn't have the blessing. It takes me back all the way back to my first curse is breaking the spiritual curse. We can have all the physical things, but not have the spiritual thing. Jabez said, Lord, bless me indeed. In other words, erase my past. Erase my name meaning, the meaning of my name. Erase all of the old. Is there anybody here that said, God, I need you to erase some stuff? God, I need you to, I need you to erase 
everything that was, the devil was trying to expose, I need you to erase. What, when somebody reminds you of your past, it's because they're living in your past. And just all you need to tell them, oh, you old news. Because you carrying old news. What if somebody came, what if the newscaster come on tomorrow morning? Breaking news. And you be like, you be sitting there, breaking news. Uh, the Twin Towers fell at nine such, such, such in 2001. You're going to be like, what? That ain't breaking news. That's old news. You're going to say, get off the TV, get off my TV. Like y'all be saying, get off my phone. You're going to say, get off my TV. Why? Because that's all new. Stop bringing me my past. You're still trying to bring a curse to me. I'm walking in the blessing. <laughs> I'm walking in the newness. Because the Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So I'm walking in the newness. So we got to break. Somebody said, break the curse. The generate, you got to break the spiritual curse. You got to break the generational curse. You got to break the cultural curse. Here it is, y'all. Y'all got to break the financial curse. Oh, I know this one right here. I got about 20, I got about 15, 10 more minutes. Got to break the financial, somebody said financial. Financial curse. Why? Because he said that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Then he said, enlarge. My coats, enlarge my territory. Now, let me talk to all of y'all. If you can't keep the one-bedroom house clean, if you can't maintain the one-bedroom house, stop asking God for a mansion. If you complaining about your light bill in the shed, oh, BM, you y'all, y'all just quick, y'all cook it. Don't ask God for no mansion, cause you got all kinds of lights. Then don't be going, to me, don't be going, to brother Hill. Can you put me a satellite up? Solar system, solar panel. You got, you got about 15 solar panels. It's still going to cost you because the solar panel costs money. So what are you saying? You need to say, God, stop. Oh, oh, let, me go, let me go back. Stop praying for financial blessings before you get spiritual blessings. Because you can have a million dollars with a food stamp mentality. I'm going to have somebody right here. Come on. You can have a million dollars and you're still doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing. You don't know how to manage it. Find that, oh, I'm talking. I'm coming down your lane. I told you I was coming down one of y'all lane. Financial curse. There's a financial curse. What is the financial curse? You living from check to check. You robbing Paul to pay Peter. You doing stuff. Under, stop putting folk on your income. Stop being, putting your neighbor children on your income tax. I'm going to let that sit there for a minute. I feel... Like I'm hitting somebody lane. <laughs> if they shut down the they, they shut down the country again, don't you get a PP loan if you don't have no business. Cause I'm not coming to the prison. <laughs> PPP, you prison property people. Stop, rob stop robbing the system because you can't do it. Okay, this is what I said. Financial curse. Watch this. And every pastor, if you're a leader, y'all stop, stop, um, hmm, Jesus. Stop working the church to do something when you just trust God 
that it can happen. We bought nine acres of property, and I'm not bragging, I'm testifying. We bought nine acres of property paid in full without selling one chicken meal. Y'all ain't helping me here. I ain't calling Missionary Woods, Sister Betty, Sister Jenny, all y'all need y'all buy 15 pounds of chicken. Y'all ain't helping, come on. We in here smelling like grease. Greased up the whole church, and we done made two hundred and fifty dollars. We've been working for eight hours, then sold two hundred plates to two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, how much we got, Bishop? Two hundred fifty dollars. How much we owe? We we almost broke even. Y'all walking around got Ben Gate. Y'all done. Y'all aching, Epsaw. Y'all can't come to church the next day. Ankles hurting. Teach the principle. They didn't sell chickens to build the kingdom of God. The people gave. Come on, somebody. They didn't, they didn't bring in no prophet liar. Well, I feel it in the name. You see, they changed their voice. I feel it in the spirit. Yeah, which one? Feel it in the spirit. There's somebody God is telling you're going to give a thousand dollars. I feel that tonight. God said you're going to give a thousand dollars to the let's do it prophet and men of God. I want you to invite me again because I feel another thousand dollars the next night. Bring your rings, bring your gold ring and your gold necklace. Feel the spirit of God. Now, now your pastor been asking you to give all year. Now you got all kinds of jewels. Where my ring get? Where my, where my necklace at? <laughs> Pimping the church. We ain't got, listen, I'm not going to pimp you. I'm not going to, I don't know what, I don't know how to pimp anyway. I'd have got a lot. I've been messing around and got tired tongue. Twisted tongue, something. Trying to give y'all something God didn't say. You know, when, I, when we raise the offering, I say, hey, I feel it. I believe that God is giving us that we're going to do it now. And, and whatever y'all give, I don't go back and say, y'all go ahead now and, and count the money right quick and come back and tell me. what. It, well, you know what? We're going to raise a second offering. No, whatever God gives us that moment, I'm going to accept it. I'm going to say, because God, if you, whatever I give, whatever they gave, they gave it from their heart. And God, I believe that you will multiply whatever has been given. Come on, somebody. That's why, amen, I'm going to go a little bit over my time, but that's why people, when people stop giving towards this ministry, you're not hurting us, you're hurting yourself. I tell people, you know, God doesn't need your money. God just wants you to trust him with your money. When you, when you stop, because what God would do, would you do, you'll stop giving over here. God will send somebody from Japan. So come on, on. we're going to sow into that house. Come on, somebody. God will send a check out of nowhere. So, so into the I'm here to tell you the vision shall come to pass. That's all I'm gonna say. Because we're gonna break financial curses. Y'all don't suppose to buy. Who said we don't supposed to buy? The Bible said as uh, Psalm 54, the earth is the law in the fullness thereof. And they that dwell in it. If I'm God's child, then I belong, I deserve to have whatever God has given me. So keep testifying about what God did for you. Keep testifying what God is doing for you. Let the haters hate. Let them do what they're going to do. It's because you gave. And God said, give, and it shall be given unto you in good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. You got spy. I know folks spying on us. I, I, it, ain't no, it ain't no secret. I want to be the example. Yes, God is doing it over here. I just invite you to do it with us. I don't want to be the only one riding a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Boy, I'm, I'm tired of this. Mother, I'm going to get that card with the, with Jesus' name. 
but break the financial curve. So what am I doing? Mr. Beasley, we didn't say, y'all, go, go get some tickets and stuff and do all these, jump through hoops and things. No, I teach the principle. The principle thing. The Bible said, watch this, spiritual warfare. Watch this, and y'all, I'm going to tie it in together. Ephesians 6 and 11. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Okay, stop right there. The minute I say, it's offering time in the temple, y'all stop getting spiritual, not y'all, but the other ones. The other people get, they stop getting spiritual and start looking at me. Bishop, you, you back, Bishop, he already got money. Okay. If I got money and you don't have it, you need to be asking me how to get it. Come on. So, Zanisha, ain't no need nobody hating on your shirt business. They can do shirts. Stop spray painting shirt dark letters. <laughs> and just ask, how did you get this business? Baby, I started at the bottom. But I didn't, I didn't give up at the bottom. I built my way up. Every time somebody gave to me, I sold towards it. I tied on it. Now, that's when they want to walk out of your presence. Young man asked me, and I'm, I'm going to give you all this and we're going to roll. Young man asked me, he said, he said, Dr. Calvin, he said, how you get all that? He said, I know, I know you pray and all that. He said, but come on, man, just tell me how you get all that. I said, I tithe. He said, huh? He said, you trying to be spiritual. I said, I tithe. I almost got an attitude. I said, I am a tither. I give. If you give me a Holy Ghost handshake, I'm going to take 10% of what you gave me and I'm giving it back to God. I tithe. If God, no, watch this. This is going to shake some of y'all. If, if I went to the place and they, I supposed to gave them $500 and they said, well, Dr. Calvin, Mr. Calvin, today we're going to give you a $200 discount. I tied on the two hundred dollars that they discounted me. Oh yeah, see, y'all see what I'm talking about? I, you were gonna give it anyway. You won't give it to two hundred to somebody else. So why not take the twenty and say, God, this thank you, favor, it's over my life. Cause the next time, God, I want you to be give me a four hundred dollar discount. So I'm going to bring 40. Thank you, God. That's all I'm saying, y'all. I found out this, Sister Tzika. I can't be God-given. So I'm going to break every financial curse in my life. If you can't manage money, find somebody that can. Connect with somebody that know how to manage. Get connected. You know, you don't have to publicly see me. I direct you somebody. Hey, manage it. Do this. Listen, you, you Manage, break the curse. We shouldn't be living at the bottom of the bar for the rest of our lives. We are blessed, y'all. We're king's kids. So we're breaking the curse. Jabez realized, Lord, enlarge my coast. In other words, Jabez said, we broke. Because we got broke spirits. We have broke spirits. He said, enlarge my coast. Watch this. I'm, I'm he said, enlarge my coast. He said, enlarge my, my coat, and that thy hand may be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. Watch this. Now, y'all think sometimes when people read this, they think Jabez said, you protect me from evil. But Jabez, I'm anutically saying that I won't do evil. I, I'm a, I don't need none of y'all gangsters to ride up right now. I need you to stay in the spirit. <laughs> But we're going to tap into it a little bit. How many of you, you could have done something and it would have cost you everything that you have? You say, instead of me doing E-V-I-L, I'm going to turn this thing, I decide to L-I-V-E. <laughs> I could take you out, but guess what? God going to take me up. <laughs> he said, keep me from, yeah, mother, you too. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Because some, watch this, as soon as you do it, it's going to trouble you. 
God, I shouldn't have did that. God, I shouldn't have made that mistake. Okay? And he said, and God granted him which he requested. Okay, give me, give me Malachi 3. Give me Malachi. Okay, here it is. I'm going to read this. And listen, I want y'all to listen. Those of you viewing, those of you understanding my boy, read this from a blessed perspective and not a carnal perspective. Because many, you said Malachi, folk go in their shell like a turtle. Oh, here he come with that Malachi. This is a blessed work. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and what? Offering. Come on, give it to me. He said, he said you are cursed with a curse, but you have robbed me, even this whole nation. He said, not only did you rob me, you robbing your children's children. You robbing a whole nation that's connected to you. Now, that's the only verse that God talks about a curse. And everybody avoid this right here. He said, bring ye all, thank you, sir. Bring ye all the tithes. Bring it, bring it back. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will open you the windows of heaven and not drip, but import you out of blessing, that you shall have not a room enough to what? Receive it. Give me verse 11. Watch this. And I will rebuke the hospital bill. I will rebuke the car note. I will rebuke the student loan for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time I'm preaching to somebody in the field. Said the Lord God of hosts. Come on, said the Lord. He said, I will, he said, I will do this for you. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. Thank you. Oh. Oh, this is another one. And all nations shall call you. Come on, y'all say it like you mean it. For ye shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. You're going to be the spotlight of your community. You're going to be the spotlight of your family. Everybody, everybody pulling up, wishing their car start. You hitting rope motion. <laughs> what you say? Everybody running outside trying to start their car. <laughs> Woo, it's cold like that. You say, oh, it's, we're getting ready to leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's a remote starter. All that. Come on. You're going to be the delight. You're going to be the highlight of the family. They're going to know you, you got to be blessed. And this is one thing that blessed me. One thing that blessed me. My mom, Jabez's mom cursed him. My mom came and visited me. Maybe she watching tonight. My mom came and visited me one time, Deacon Hill. And my mom said, son, you are a blessed man. Man, that almost took me out. When your mother, the person that raised you, tell you you are blessed. And it takes me back to what my mom used to do. It used to have these little orange envelopes back in the days. And I used to walk up to the front of the church and put it in this box. I just wanted to do it. I would say, Mama, let me do it. Let me do it, Mama. Let me do it. And she'd, she'd lick the, little, the envelope, put the money in there. And she'd say, you know what my mama was letting me do? She was letting me go pay her tithes. She was training me up. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go. That when he get old, he would not depart from it. Oh! I don't know what my other siblings are doing, but God has caused me that if I don't do anything, I'm going to tie it to God. I'm going to get, I'm telling anybody that is not tied into God, let me help you out. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. It, it's a simple thing. Start now. That's all I'm going to say. 
Anyone that is not tied into God, start now. You don't want the curse following you. Give me, give me that, ladies. Let me borrow you. Let me borrow you. Let me borrow your, your little thing here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I can't do it like that. This matched my outfit, don't it? Don't it? It does. It's black and white. But don't this look off? What if I walked around like the, the guy on Charlie Brown? Y'all see that blanket? It's follow me. It look out of order, don't it? This look strange, doesn't it? This look funny, don't it? What if I said this swag? You no, know, you said, no, that's drag. Look what I'm doing. That's what the curse does. It follows you. And it makes you look out of order. It makes you look strange. Because it's is following you. Then you talking about, ooh, I'm going up to another level. Guess what? I ain't even touching it. It goes right with you. It follows you everywhere you go. So what are you saying, Bishop? You tell that curse, mm -mm, I don't want you no more. I'm sorry. I don't want you no more. I'm going I'm to be free from the curse. I'm going to be free from the curse. Somebody shall free. All right. Y'all give me Genesis 26. I'm just going to read straight through it because some of y'all looking at the time. Give me Genesis 26. Come on. Genesis 26. Here it is. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Geror and dwelled there. Come on. And Isaac dig again the wells of water at which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father. And for the Philistine had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which, amen, by which his father had called them. Come on. And Isaac, the servant, digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac Herdman, saying, the water is ours. That's like that friend, that guy, that neighbor that had that two feet property. And he called the name of the well Exec because they strove with them. They were fighting. And they did another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. Here it is. And he removed from this and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. Why? And said, for now the Lord has made room. Come on. Made room for us and we shall be my God. <laughs> that means God, I need a Rehoboth blessing. Jabez said, enlarge my coast. In other words, give me room enough. Give me room enough. Some of us, we be trying to squeeze, y'all trying to squeeze that one dress in your closet now. Trying to squeeze that one shirt in your, come on, y'all know in that dresser drawer. And I'm broke five times because you're trying to get that one shirt in there. But God, come on, say, God, give me room enough to receive my blessing in Jesus' name. Now put a praise on it right there. Come on, put a. And it is so. And it is so. So tonight, I want to tell you to overcome the curse. Overcome the curse. The spiritual curse. Come on. The generational curse. The cultural curse. In the financial curse. Now, there are some more curses I can cover tonight, but because of time. Listen, overcome the curse. Tonight, I decree that you will overcome every curse that has tried to take you out. Every curse that tried to take your family out. In Jesus' name, clap your hands right there. Come on, clap your hands. <laughs> Father, we thank you for you're the curse breaker. You break every chain, 
you break every curse. You break every demonic curse. You break every spiritual curse. You break every generational curse. You break every cultural curse. You break every financial curse. And tonight, we trust you that you were breaking. You said because of the anointing, yokes are destroyed. And we destroy the yoke, the curse that has been on our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Somebody clap your hands if you thank God for the curse breaker. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what we're going to do. Listen, I'm going to help somebody tonight. You said, Bishop, I haven't been given. I haven't been given in my tithes. I haven't been given in offering. Tonight, we're going to break that, help you break that curse. On the screen, you will hear it. See different ways. Don't look at the man. Look at the plan. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Uh, there, there are ways you're going to be able to sow into the ministry. On the screen, you will see it. There are electronic ways you can give. Amen. Tonight, we're going to be giving. Amen. We're giving. We're sowing. We're believing God tonight for the seed that we release. It will be increased. Come on, somebody. Amen. The seed that we release will be increased, and we're believing God. There are ways you can sow on the screen. You can see it. Amen. Listen, this is the season. The year the Bible said the year that Isaac sowed, he reaped in the same year. Even also, if those of you viewing us want to give via mail, you can do so. You can mail it in the P.O. Box 417 Sykes, Missouri, 63801. Amen. The information is on the screen. We thank God for all of you that are giving. Those of you that are viewing us live, we want to thank God for you. We want to thank you for tuning in tonight. We want to thank you for being with us tonight. We love you. Come on, New Direction. Let's celebrate those that are viewing us tonight. Come on. We love you all. We'll see you next Wednesday, or we'll see you this coming Sunday. And remember, your now is not your later. Come on, put a praise on. Let's thank God for our live audience. Amen. We thank God for you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being with us. Amen. Where are all the cheerful givers at? Where are all the cheerful givers at?